head office, but that's where the product comes from, and they're a distributor of those products. And I met Sharon a couple of years ago, and it was through, actually through a business broker who um, I met in a networking event with Peter Bank, actually. And he mentioned to me that there was this lady who owned a business down the road who was thinking of selling, I'm not sure if she was going to sell or was a product manager of, and wasn't that happy with her accountant and needed some advice. So that was how we met. Nice. And, um, and Sharon and I have worked together since then, and I worked alongside Sharon to um, ensure that she's kept on top of what's happening in the business. So that I go along for meetings with her and the general manager just to make sure that Sharon is kept aware of everything that's happening in the business on a day to day basis. Thank you. Okay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right. Well yes, yeah, so my name's Sharon Dawson. Hi, everybody. Um, a little bit about my background, I've been, uh, I've taught dancing for a couple of years, I've been a psychiatric nurse, um, and I've been a customs officer for 11 years, and then I came home to New Zealand because my, uh, my family asked me to come and look after my dying grandfather, so I left all of that life behind, and uh, came back here and I had no job, and I said to my dad, please can I come and work for your business? Business, please can I come and work for you? And he said, no, go <laughs> <laughs> and do your own thing. And um, so I did. I became operations manager for a, um, a small company and then I got pregnant and had kids and that sort of threw a spanner in the work because I was 40 years old at that point and wasn't anticipating that that was going to happen. Um, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so anyway, so I had my, I had my children and uh, I had two and my father allowed me to come into work one day a month to process the shipment that came in from Japan and I knew nothing about two-way radios which is what he'd been dealing with since I was 16 years old. I knew nothing at all about them. I had never been in any sort of technical business that required a technical brain, and here I was working out the back, but unpacking boxes and putting stickers on radios, and I did it once a month. I, um, I grew to have a passion for these little black radios, you know, the sort that you use when you're on an airplane or on a boat or is in security or in a logging truck in the forest. I, I looked around at what Dad was doing and at the time he had one salesman, my dad, and the accounts lady working for him and then me coming in once a month. And he had those two other staff members for, for a considerable time at that stage. Um, what we didn't know was that Dad had cancer. And as he became more sick, I started speaking more time at the business. I'd just come in for the occasional afternoon every now and then and uh, after he died I came in full time. Prior to him dying, he had like three weeks prior to him dying, um, he recognised that uh, he wanted to recognise the two staff members that had been with him for a period of time. So he went over to Japan and he said to the Japanese people um, who made the brand, uh, look I want to give 5% of my company of those two staff members because when I'm gone I hope that will encourage them to stay with the company and move it forward. Icom Japan, Icom's the company I own, Icom Japan, the manufacturers, said own 5% of the company as well, so the family owned the rest of it at that stage, Japan owned 5%. Icom Japan said yes, we think that's a lovely idea, we're into the family thing, we'll support you with that. Gave each of the staff 5% and dad dropped dead. Now I was left out the back packing boxes in the family business with these other two people running the business and neither of them was anything more than a salesperson and a, a, an accounts lady. And yet they were there to drive the business forward and I struggled with that, the whole family struggled with that. Mum knew nothing at all about the business so what they decided to do was get a business manager. Now he was down in Wellington and he would come up once a month and talk to those two staff members and say, well what have you achieved this month? And they would tell him and he would give them some suggestions, go back down to Wellington again, um, ready to come up in a month's time. And mum realised, wow this is costing me a lot of money, the business is basically sort of staying where it is, it's, it's holding its place. But um, long term, 
Um, what are we going to do? Are we going to grow it? Are we going to close it down? What, what are we going to do? And I'm still out the back packing boxes. So uh, about eight years after Dad had died, I thought this just isn't working. The family is not benefiting by this. And the family is my mother, my sister and myself. The family is not benefiting. <coughs> Mum's not benefiting by this. Mum's stressed out because she doesn't know what's happening in the company and she's just crossing her fingers and hoping everything sorry, every month that she can pay the bills. This is no good. So I thought, I can do things better. I know this business now. I've done every role in the company and, and by this time, except for the accounts role. I, I can do this. So I took over the business. I bought the business off my mother so that when, um, when if, if anything happened to mum, my sister wouldn't be able to lay claim to it. It was my business. That's what I wanted. So I bought it in the global financial crisis happened like two months later and I thought, oh my God, what have I got myself into here? Um, I managed to, to hang on and um, there was many a day where I did think, oh my God, should I just be pulling down the roller doors and, and walking out of here? You know, I wasn't built for all of the stress and I said I hadn't come from a business background. Um, but so what I did along the way was recognise my um, the things that I wasn't good at and get people in to help me with those things. And part of that process was getting um, Pod Consulting, who are just down here in Tamaki, um, and other people like that who are uh, like a business mentor, I suppose. That came along and they said, "Have you tried this? What are you doing about this?" And a bit like the guy at Wellington, but a bit more constructive and right on. And I felt well supported and it gave me some fresh ideas. And then I thought, is this how I want to be for the rest of my life? Do I want to be worrying about my business? Do I want to be you know, supporting these other two staff members and me, and it's just me with all the stress on me? And I thought, well, I don't know, what am I going to do? And at that point I thought, should I be selling? And I got, I, I had the option of selling or finding somebody else to work for me and I thought the radio industry is such a small industry in New Zealand. We all know each other. We're all pretty much grey haired people of this similar sort of age. We've all got our own businesses. There really isn't anybody that I can identify out there who I can say please come and run my business for me. So I think I'm going to have to sell. So I went to Link and I had the most fabulous salesperson at Link. And he went through the process with me. In fact, we got to the stage where we had uh, three offers on the table. And they were really good offers. And then I looked at those offers and I thought, okay, my business is turning over about uh, between two and a half and three million dollars, something like that. Um, by the time I sell it, you know, I'll come away with, I don't know, over a million dollars. But is that going to is that going to move me forward? Is that going to pay enough money for my retirement? Is that going to keep me going for the rest of my life in the way that I've become accustomed to? And I thought, hell no. <laughs> but before I could even think that, I had to go to Japan because I can't sell the business. No, I'm a distributor. So I import the icon manufactured radios from Japan and then I sell them to dealers all around the country. What if I got a new person on board buying this business and icon Japan said, we're not going to supply them. We don't think that they're going to be the right distributor for the business. And I thought, if they don't accept it, then I'm, then I'm lost. <coughs> I go, no, I can't sell it either. So at that point, I started thinking, what am I going to do? Sell it or keep it? Find somebody else in it. And when I looked at the money that I was going to get for it and how long um, I assume I'm going to live for, hope I'm going to live for, the figures just didn't add up. I went to Japan. And I said to them, will you, will you let me sell it? Will you take on the new owners? These are the three deals that I've got on the table, so will you consider any of these? And uh, Japan um, kindly said, yes, you know, that would be okay. But the week before, literally the week before I went to Japan, a contact that I had who was, um, he, he hires people, a recruitment agency, um, he'd been a previous mentor of mine, so he knew my business well. 
And a guy had come into his business and said, I'm looking for a job, I've just arrived from England, been here six months, wasn't going to work, but now I'm thinking I might. I'm in the radio industry, I was in the radio industry in England, but maybe I'd like to be a recruitment consultant here. And, um, and my ex-mentor said, oh, the radio industry, I know, just the person you should talk to. And so I interviewed this guy, actually I was in Wellington, Skyping this guy, interviewing him, literally flying out to Japan the next day. So I went to Japan with three offers on the table and in my back pocket a possible general manager moving forward. And in Japan I had to make that decision what I was going to do. Came back from Japan and, and with the help of um, Todd mentoring me, um, the length gentleman who kindly you know, went through the options again with me, um, I made the decision to take the general manager on board. And thank God I did. <laughs> it was absolutely the right decision for me. So the way that that works for me, uh, Simon's his name. Simon comes in, um, I'm only paying him 100000 a year, so uh, he, certainly by no means overpaid, he is unpaid for what he does for me. Um, so I give him bonuses in other ways. Um, Simon goes into work 9 to 5 every day and worries about it during the night and I don't have to worry about it anymore. We have grown from a business where when I took over there were actually three staff and myself, we now have nine staff members including myself. Um, it has been about uh, yeah, two years since Simon started with me, and in that time, the business hasn't grown significantly, but it hasn't slipped at all, which is really good. I was concerned about it going backwards. Um, when I was in control, before Simon came, I was worried that there, was, um, uh, there were things happening in the marketplace that would drive my business backwards. It hasn't gone backwards. And in fact, Simon has driven the business so that instead of us just selling a box with a radio in it, we now sell a solution to people, which is a whole different a step up to what we were doing before. Instead of just saying, yeah, here's a radio, we're saying, yeah, here's a radio, and these are the things that we'll do for you, which is so much more than just press the button and talk. Um, this, this radio is going to, um, going to tell your helicopter when to come in and spin its, its rotors so that, um, the frost doesn't get down and burn your grapes. Uh, and really strange things. Radios do things like um, um, they put one each side of the tube with wheat going through the tube, and the tube and the one radio says to the other, "Hi, I can see you. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Can you see me?" As long as it's flowing. When it stops flowing, when the wheat stops flowing, the radio, "Hey, can, I, can you see me? No, I can't see you. Oh, it's jammed." Someone down in Christchurch calls up the port in Tauranga and says, hey, the chute is jammed. That's what a radio can do, so much more than this. And so now we're looking at whole network solutions um, that encompass huge areas. We've really driven it to a whole different place and that's because of Simon. So we've taken it from my limited background and Simon's driven it so much further. What's that allowed me to do? What was I going to do if I had uh, sold my business? Um, I really wanted to go back to university, which I've been doing now full time. Um, I'm in my final year at university. Um, I'm doing an events management um, course, which allows me, uh, which tied up in it is sales and marketing as well. So uh, through that course, I've learned how to do the account stuff for the business. I've learned how to do marketing for the business, sales stuff for the business, stuff that I've never been involved in before. So by doing this course, it's not only benefited myself, but it's benefited the company as well. And I started doing the course because I was worried, if I'm going to sell my business, what am I going to do? What am I going to walk away and do and set retire, which I'm not ready for? So at the end of the day, the benefits that Simon has brought um, is keeping the business growing and positively growing. Um, so that we have some huge, like a couple of multi-million dollar deals in the pipeline for this year that I'm convinced that we're going to get, which we would never have got two years ago. So he's grown the business, he's freed me up to do the uh, university course that I want to, and um, and he's, he's made, the, the best part is that I've been able to introduce him to Japan, so in the future, and that's why he's happy to 
10,000 yen. In the future, the company will be owned by them. So it gives me an exit strategy as well, a, a bit like the um, platform we're talking about. It gives me an exit strategy so that I know moving forward I have a new owner who's going to take my passion and, and grow it for his own uses. So, um, so that covers it. Right. Does anyone have any 